brown glove. It's fifty percent off, and like, so imagine like a proper decent steakhouse. Ah, oh, the price. You have a discount booster. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for joining this episode of Film Club. I'm one your host, Andy Harrison. To my right, as always, it's the discounted Andy of the Andy and Hi and he and I. What the hell's our channel called anymore? Andy and I. Yeah. Um, every single time. week in Film Club, we invite you along to watch a film with us. We dive into some of cinema's best before coming back here to check it out. Andy, Gosh. I also totally mentioned, totally forgot to mention there, your name, Andy Dalton. Yes. It's been me. a while. This is our first one um, since 2019 because Happy New Year and all that jazz. Yeah, we just like to film well in advance so we can actually chill out. We had a bit of time off, but we are back. And weirdly enough, we took a bit of time off in the worst possible place imaginable. What, in between, yeah. Two weeks prior, we started The Godfather. We started The Godfather Part 2, and now we are back for The Godfather Part 3. So, Andy, take it away. Tell them a little bit about what The Godfather Part 3 is about. If you haven't seen The Godfather 1, if you haven't seen The Godfather 2, stop watching, because spoilers <laughs> ahead. Godfather 3 is about the end of the Corleone family. Nice one. So, uh... Episode one, episode two of The Godfather, our show, was much more about, like, I think more about me experiencing The Godfather for the first time. So this is my first time watching the third one. This is your first time watching the third one. So I want to ask you, what did you think of the third one? It's not as bad as I thought. So I'm, I'm quite thankful of that. Um, I, I didn't watch it for a reason. I didn't watch it because everyone said, oh, no, it's this, it's that. You should don't watch it. Whatever you do, don't watch it. It's nothing on the first two. It is, it's right. It's nothing on the first two, but it's not necessarily a bad film. Mm. It's... Um, it's got everything I love about The Godfather in it, in the sense of the the sense of family, the slow pacing scenes can be a bit problematic at points. Um, the 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 Al Capone is just amazing. Andy Garcia is sublime in Al this. Al What did I say? Al Capone. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Al Pacino, <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Um, Keaton, Diane Keaton, who plays Kay, is phenomenal in his role. We mentioned about her in the first couple of films, which doesn't get too much screen presence. Whereas in this, it's her time to shine. It's amazing. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we maybe either skipped over in the last two episodes of Film Club, um, but maybe maybe it's here she really gets to shine the best I agree. anyway. It really is. It's, it's her. And especially, absolutely, 100%, especially Connie. She kills it in this film. She absolutely kills it. Um, I'll get the actress's name in a second. I said it in the second episode, but I absolutely mispronounced the hell. I'm probably going to mispronounce the hell out of it again. Do you not know who Connie is? Remind me who Connie is. Oh my God, it's her sister. She's the oh, auntie. Yeah. Well, yes. yeah, but do you not think she was like immensely underwritten here? Like she doesn't. Get yeah, much okay, to do. yeah, she is. But the fact that matters, it's like she's out there. She's like this. She's she's one of the family. Whereas the first two films, like especially in the first one, you see her as a bit of a oh, just another family. Oh yeah, you killed my husband and all this. Like you said, if you haven't fucking watched it, watch it. Uh, killed my husband and all this. The second one, she's a bit more like looking after. Um, um, oh my god, what's his name? What's his name? Um, uh, Michael. Mike. Sorry, oh, Michael. Michael got his name. Like my head's in all over. I'm still work mode. Um, and then she comes into this like one of her own like speaking of the family and that's what I like yeah. about that character of well, family like accepting their family responsibility I agree and she, she felt like yeah, she'd she, really she become a member of the family yeah. here and every time she turned up I was interested and I want to hear more of what she had to say and more of what she had to do Talia Shire but there kind of wasn't more so I actually made a mistake in the last review where I mentioned something about I thought it was um, it was uh, blah, 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 blah. What's, his, what's her name what's her name what's her name Sophia Coppola I thought there's some relation. Oh, yeah, where so it turns out she's in this. She's married. She's um, Mike's son. Yeah? Yep. Uh, daughter. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So that's what everyone <laughs> raised on about the film. It's like she can't act and all this, or she's not the best at this. Mm, all right, sound. She does have quite a large presence in the film. Um, but, right, okay. I heard somebody say something interesting, right? Uh, they don't blame Sophia Coppola for this performance. And what they actually blame is Francis Ford Coppola for even putting her in the role. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I read it. It was a really good... Um, it was someone's review, and I was reading a couple of reviews of it towards the end, and it said, this is a prime example of nepotism gone wrong. Yeah, it kind of is. You know, the idea that you can get somebody into a certain position because you're a To be fair, when, you, when Nona, I can't pronounce her name, Ryder, dropped out. So she was supposed to be, like, their Mary as well. And it's, it's unfortunate that, like... Sophia Coppola has never really been able to shake the idea of nepotism in her career. And she clearly was trying here. It's not like she's phoning it in. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Just, she couldn't do the performance. Yeah, okay. When That's it's fair. a shame because The Godfather series is known for its incredible performances. And I think, I mean, I, I touched it just over there. Like, So uh, Andy uh, Garcia is one I know majorly from um, the Ocean's trilogy, actually. Right. Like, that's my first experience, Andy Garcia. I've seen a few of the films since then. Um 
and I saw him in this, and I was I didn't know what to expect because he normally plays a bit of a villain role. So immediately I was on the defensive, especially at the start of the scene where he's not on the list. Oh my god, what a fucking performance! Like what a character as well. I love his character. I love everything about him. I love especially that scene where he's in his apartment, and it's so reminiscent of the um, of the first film where Michael goes in to see his father is in hospital, and then that guy brings comes up with the flowers, and he's like, oh yeah, do we colour up like this? Go outside, so he, he he knows how to utilize the people around him to to kind of get out of trouble. And um, in this case, he obviously is a bit more like kind of puts her as bait. He goes, go and get me some water, knowing that there's someone out there. He's he's mm -hmm. cautious like this. She has a knife to her throat, and he's there, and he's just ruthless, cold, but at the same time, like yeah. he's 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 he just no, he's, he's he's so intellectual. He's he's so like. Oh, it's a fucking great I was character. A bit, great of that, character. a bit of that scene mixed with the Robert De Niro stuff from the second part as well. Yes, you know, absolutely, like 100%. Yeah, sort of stuff. excellent. But you can also see Sonny in him as well, yeah. which I loved. I love that his, his outburst, his anger, and he reigns in, and he's like caring for his family. That's all he is, he cares for his family, which is what Sonny was all about. Oh, what a performance, man. Andy, I was, that, I was, I was blown away. Do you and, know it's a, it's a shame not to have in here? Is Tommy? Hagen. Yeah. Do you know why? Uh, so I've heard that he wouldn't do it because of like the quality of the script or something. No, no, no. It's um, another thing as well. It could be that, but another one was he wanted to get paid the same as um, oh, Al Pacino. I was going to say Al Pacino. Oh, right. Okay. Al Pacino. Um, he didn't even get offered half of what Al Pacino got. Okay. And supposedly later in an interview, he said it was yeah, fair enough. But like when they when they're paying you a fifth of what Al Pacino is getting, you know, I don't yeah. regret my decision. So I think Robert Duvall. I wonder how much he had. I wonder in the first draft how much of a role he had because if you compare oh, no, that no, to... So he was supposed to be huge. He was supposed right. to... What I've read is... Oh, God, this is a few years ago, so I could be talking shit. Um, what I was supposed to read is obviously Tom not being a Sicilian um, or Italian, you know, everything like that, um, which could never be the Godfather, but I read that he was supposed to... Um, Michael was supposed to pass on the mantle to Tom. Right, okay. Um, and obviously, there's, so he's obviously his lawyer is going to have more more to do in these um, in the charity affairs, like you know, like like these kind of business affairs, legitimate so business. It's a shame. I I fucking love Tom Hagen. Could have been an interesting twist on it because, as it stands, I think the biggest problem for the film is the fact that some key elements are based around characters that, if I'm honest, I don't care about. Go on, it's who? based around um, um, uh, well, one big spoiler if you haven't seen this. Right at the end, Sofia Coppola's character dies. Yeah. And although you care for Al Pacino, you care for, for, for Michael, and you care that he's lost something, also basing so much this film around her, I kind of, every time she's on screen, I disconnected. I struggled, um, interesting about that death scene, I struggled with the, and it's a weird thing to say, because again, it's Dan Keaton and it's Al Pacino. I struggled with their rendition of Heartbreak of their suffering like that. If you look at the scene going back and you learn about, like, you see Tom and you see uh, Vito, Colleone, um, Mike Marlon Brando, um, go on about, if you haven't seen it, fucking watch it. Because mm, Marlon Brando's that, like, totally so, small yeah. sort of yeah, reaction so, so to his death it. where he's sat down like this and he's just like, he like, kind of goes, like, he goes down like this and you've got the, the scene on from that when he's in the funeral parlour that you mentioned. Yeah. And he breaks down and the scene on from that where he's in the end um, talking to the five families or the, or the heads of the families and he's saying, you know, but my other my my other son Michael that I I do not I yeah. will not forgive that like you've got three stages of grief there. With this, you just had I know it's only a little scene like this. You just had one outburst, which was a bit of a, a delayed ah yeah, yeah, and I didn't buy into it. No, I I don't. As I think I think this film stands as a great example as to how delicate the first two Godfather films are, and how when pushed one way or the other can easily become um not not. No, Difficult films to watch, like because the Godfather one, two are long. There's a lot of dialogue. They're arduous. They deal with lots of characters, and for all their faults, they manage to overcome them. Yeah, thanks to a great direction. You know, and great cast, great cinematography. Everyone's working together through Francis Ford Coppola's vision to produce something that is like pinpoint. He knows exactly what he wants to make. This felt like. Get a rough idea as to what you wanted to make. I feel like like you look at the stuff in the second Godfather where I there was only a little bit I struggled with, and I mentioned it in the last review with Hyman Roth in the sense of like, oh, it's a new, it's a new um, what's it called antagonist, like kind of like friend antagonist introduced, and it's like keeping hold of everyone's names, everything like that. But you can kind of get around because it's like Hyman Roth all the way through, and obviously Fredo at some points, and so that anyway. In this one, you're introduced to more characters like the amount of the, the Cardinals, the Cardinals kind of. Um, Financer guy, you've got the Pope, you've got the, in amongst all that, you've got the two different Dons, you've got the guy who's like a Capio Gem, if that's how you pronounce it. You have a lot of characters, you have a lot of characters there to remember 
on top of the ones that you already remember in the first two Godfathers, it's not like they give it to give them to you on a plate. Whereas Salazar and the first Godfather sits down with Salazar, or Salazar's here, Salazar wants to do drugs, we don't want to deal with Salazar, I'm going to kill Salazar. That's halfway through the film, you hear Salazar's name so much. Roth, you hear out Roth, Roth this, Roth, Roth that, yeah. more green, yeah. left, left, right, centre. In this, it's just, the only one that's mentioned is the um, the Carpio Gem that um, betrays um, Andy Garcia's character a bit. And then everyone else is just like Don Sonso and the, the purple and all this, and it's all fraud and everything like this. And by this point, I'm just like, I'm a bit out. I think it's partly because the script is bloated. The script could oh, do right. with another mm. pass, I think. There's a lot of this this sort of film where there are scenes and there are moments and there are plot points that are kind of unnecessary. Yeah, it's, it, it struggles with pacing a lot. There's the there's the whole thing where like Michael um, has a diabetic attack. Yes, and when you Which think is about reminiscent it, of the first Godfather, you know, he's in hospital. It feels like a retread of the Marlon yeah. Brando stuff. Yep. But then what role does this actually play? In the, in the first one, just you put him back. into prison. Well, no, to the, get... the role it actually plays is the fact that Andy Garcia shows his ability to actually head the family alongside Connie. So it's yeah. like giving away for that to actually happen. But, but he gets berated for it. Uh, sorry, a diabetic attack? Yeah. yeah. Like of all things you could have gone it's with? Just a, yeah, it's a bit loose. He could like, he could have got shot in the, in the tower. It's many different factors. It's... Yeah, it, it's, it is bloated. It struggles with pace a bit. Story, it struggles with characters. It struggles with in comparison to the first two, which was just exceptional. That's the important thing is that I don't think it's a terrible film. No. I think that actually it's, it's a perfectly fine film. Mm. And it's, it is, if you love The Godfather, I would actually recommend watching it because it's just a nice bit of homely kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's nice as these characters like 20 years later yeah. because he took a long break in between doing 90s, two and three. This was 90s and the others were in the 70s. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to revisit these characters. It's nice to see like kind of Michael's story a little bit later on even though it doesn't stay nice for him. Which sucks, Weird yeah. ending. Yep. Like even after the death when oh. he just collapses on the chair. How weird's that? It felt like Francis Ford Coppola being like, done. Yeah. Like you can't have a fourth one. It's done. And also, in amongst that, I struggled with a little bit of um, weird and out, like kind of cousin on cousin stuff. I thought that was a bit unnecessary. I thought you were into cousin on cousin. Uh, no, uh, wipe that off the slate because that's never been a thing. He's just been a dickhead. What's that cousin on cousin um, stuff on your phone? So I, uh, I struggled with the idea of his, his daughter, obviously acting with Andy Garcia, playing this role that's quite romantic. And I was thinking, if I was the daughter, I'd be like, if I was Sophia, I would have been a bit like, uh, all right, dad, look away, that thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, she. I think as a family, they've been around cinema a yeah, lot. Exactly, so like, yeah. There's a bit of that. But anyway, there is The Godfather Part 3. You can let us know what you thought of The Godfather Part 3 down in the comments below, or you can hit us up on Twitter, as always. However, do let us know what you thought of The Godfather Part 1 and Part 2 as well, because actually I think those had a very different conversation to what we've had today. So let us know. True. Um, but Andy True. and I are going back once again next week, where we take a look at Hell or High Water. And if you're watching this, Martin, finally done it. But if you're not watching it, because you won't be, fuck off. Fuck off, Martin. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>